Hi, this is Glenda. I thought I'd talk about a dye brush comparison today uh, because being the toolaholic that I am, I've bought three different brands. Um, so I'll talk about the different features. The Spellbinders I have had for the longest. I've had that for over a year and it cost me $18. The Zata Tool It All um, I got August last year, so that's about three months. It cost me $24. And the Sizzix dye brush I got just before Christmas and that cost me $15. So cheapest, dearest, in between. As far as I know, the Spellbinders was the first kit on the block. This seems to have come in fairly quickly afterwards and copied it. And then Sizzix has waited and until they could make their seem different. It's, it's just my impression. This is all my opinion. Um, just a user like everybody else and I just thought I wanted to know what the differences were. Um, so I thought I'd share what I found out. So the Spellbinder comes with uh, two little attachments and the brush and I believe they've brought out a, a second kit of things that you can attach. The what's this one? The, the tool at all has three little attachments plus the brush plus a tiny little brayer. I haven't honestly thought about anything to do with this brayer yet but maybe. The Sizzix comes with a piece of foam and the brush. None of these replace your pokey tool. Honestly if you're getting little bits out of dies you will still need a pokey tool. These two have a pokey tool built in. So um, to put the the tool in the end, you simply pull it down, click it in, whoops, and you can have it at slightly different heights, but I was afraid that it might break, so I think I have mine sort of set right in. Anyway, I thought I'd use that quite a bit. I don't. Um, I do grab this tool all the time. It, it's constantly in use because I do a lot of die cutting, love die cutting and this changed my world to get this. Um, this one to change out um, the brush and the roller it's a screw job so you just spin it round. Equally to put something in the end uh, and I had f forgotten how to do it, I'd forgotten what it even came with. Um, it's a screw job like a knife uh, where you put it in and tighten it up. And these little bits all go in here. And there must be a knife as well because it had a big warning on the side, don't store the blades in here. So clearly I haven't and they're somewhere in my room. Um, so obviously you can put a knife in there instead of the little thing. Although I love multi-tools, when it comes to the way I work, I like each tool to do a job um, and I don't want to keep swapping heads out. So although I am a collector of things that do multiple things, I don't actually use them that way. Um, I believe Sizzix has replacement heads. I find that a bit of a worry because I'm not sure why you would need to. But maybe if, like, I mean, I've been using this for over a year and it looks exactly the same, as far as I can tell. Um, so I'm not sure why you need replacement heads, but that's an option with them. Um, I thought all three were pretty much identical in the job they do, and it was only this exercise that made me realise the huge difference. If you have a look at these two, the brushes are very, very similar and quite close together. I'm hoping you can see this one. The brushes are far apart and for really, really intricate dies, it doesn't do the job. Um, I, for, because I've only just got this, it's sort of not in the equation for this, but I couldn't work out why I kept going to this one all the time. This one seems sturdier, it's metal. Um, and then it finally dawned on me that that is why this one works better because of the difference in the brushes. Um, so 
on that basis I'd have to say this is the worst one which still gets clarified a bit but um, now the foam I hate the foam um, if I got a whole lot of dyes prepared here that hopefully I can show you if you are using something like this butterfly which I consider a very open dye you can persevere on your foam and sort of push it in and it'll get well see it hasn't even pulled them all out um, and then you can sort of fuss with it but the, if you're using something really intricate um, like this one that has little tiny holes the foam just makes your life hard however um, if you take a piece of paper to catch your scraps first thing to do tap it over a bin and a lot of them will simply come out normally I use my whole rubbish bin not just this get the easy ones out first so you tap it see a lot of them have come out already hold it in your hand rub your brush over it and a whole lot more will come out and that's looking pretty good already use the pokey tool don't feel obliged that you've got to get every bit out with your new brush tool um, I believe the Sizzix one is the one that Stampin' Up's about to carry um, so there'll be a lot of people using it and demoing it a lot of the ones I've seen demoing it already are persevering with their foam and trying to get it out forget the foam um, and so all of that's out uh, there's a couple of little bits in here for four little pieces I'm just going to get the pokey tool it is important to get them all out if you let these build up um, eventually they just get almost impossible to get out and your dye will stop cutting so clean them out every time grab your bits with a bit of paper the fact of life is if you use really intricate dyes you're going to have bits of paper around your room um, now the see this one this is a very open dye I know it's intricate but it's a very open dye this guy will get in there and get most of those because they're big but even then I don't think it does quite as good a job as the little brushes finish it off with the pokey tool and there they're all out again there's going to be a few left over I'm just going to grab it with this one pop those out and I think there's one left I haven't used any wax paper or um, any of the other things that people are doing with these. Sometimes I do like to get the um, unused dryer sheet and just wipe my dye over with it and I have always found that has been helpful. Depends on the brand of dyes. Some of them have a very good coating um, and some of them need a bit of help. Mr. Cherry Lynn says don't use the dryer sheets because it builds up on your dye. I, I mean, using it where you just rub it over a bit, I haven't had a problem, um, and I find it does help release. So, especially a new dye. Uh, what else did I want to show? Let me see. I've cut a whole lot of things ready to show. Now I can't remember. I've been playing with these all day. Um, again, we'll tap it on the side. None of those are going to come out this time. This is a slightly older dye. I'm going to use my Spellbinders one, little tiny holes Just finish taking it out now the other thing that you could often do is rub your finger over the back and a lot of things will come out that way The more intricate the diet, the more work you've got to do to get it, and the more stunning the piece should be. Uh, you know, if you're going to go to all this work, you want something that really looks nice. 
um, and you finish it off with your pokey tool for the bits that won't come out. Different papers are going to behave differently. Um, possibly different cutting machines. I've run these all through my crossover because that's what I use most and I find I get really good results. Um, but that's my opinion about these brush tools. Um, personally, I think I like to hold this one better. Either of these are going to be fine though to buy. Um, there is a slight price difference, but then I bought this when it had no competition. I think they may have come down in price now that they have so much competition. And with hindsight, I'd probably stay away from this one unless you really, really want to have a tiny brayer. And no, honestly, it it doesn't do as many dyes as these two will do. Uh, and again, don't worry about the foam. Um, to put it in your hand and just run it in your hand, I find that far more efficient than trying to fluff around with the foam and just catch it in a bit of paper. And this one's just going to pop out the big pieces. You don't even need the brush for that. The bigger the pieces, the less you need to use the brush. But that one's not quite cut through. But anyway, um, so hopefully that was everything I wanted to say after playing for a while and using them for a while. But if you do intricate die cuts, get a brush of some sort. Um, I did try using a hairbrush at one point, and really these are, are worth it. When you consider that they're cheaper than a single die, um, and I have a lot of dies, so yeah, in the scheme of things, they're worth it. So, if you're thinking of this, of getting one of these um, die brushes, hope that's helped, uh, because I didn't find any comparisons out there. It was a lot of people showed individual ones. Um, that's what I have to say today. Thank you.